I went to see the manager this morning and I asked him about getting some hot ice for us tennis and he told me that it's not his food being thought of and he don't want to hear it. I said, well, it seemed that everyone in the neighborhood of Dantry Court had lost their cool following the power outage. Some said the power was out for up to 36 hours due to overloads before the storm. Working crews got the electricity restored before noon today, but the lack of power for the past 36 hours was only part of the problem to these people. Many of the low-income families here in the Brooklyn homes buy groceries in bulk at the beginning of the month to save money. Spoilage of some of their food could mean unusual financial burdens for many of the residents. It's going on 36 hours at our residence, and there still has been no direction on what will be done and who will take care of our losses. Can I ask you one question? We tried to get some information from the manager, but he failed to respond to our questions on behalf of his tenants. Instead, we were directed to a spokesman for the housing department downtown, who said it is not the city's policy to reimburse residents for lost food. Spokesman Dick Davis said residents should keep the refrigerator closed during outages in order to prevent spoilage. The electrical system at Brooklyn Homes is owned and maintained by the city. Nevertheless, customers there could have used free dry ice supplied by BG&E at several locations. But the site nearest to the Brooklyn Homes was in Severna Park, too far for many families to travel without cars. When we asked why the city couldn't provide dry ice at the housing project, a spokesman said their first priority is to restore power. But they might consider making dry ice available next time. Ed Hanrahan, News Scene 2. I just want to reassure those of you that live in the homes that we're going to be purchasing. We're going to work with you to relocate. We'll give you as much time as you need uh, after we purchase the homes to find another place to live. And we'll work out some reasonable rental which will be nominal at the very most. How much did you lose, do you think, at this point? I'll say about $50 worth of meats that spoiled in the freezer. They couldn't give you any kind of ice or anything like that? No. And it just messed all my food up my refrigerator. How much do you think you lost? About $65 or $70, but because I had a whole lot of food still left in my deep freezer. The person comes in and states that they have food that is spoiled. We request that they bring it in because we are supposed to witness it, and we allow them to file a, da uh, a damage claim. The fire started in a second floor apartment and traveled up the stairwell. Eight-year-old Eva Stooks, seen here on the left, was caught in that stairwell. She was staying with her uncle Avon Stooks when the fire broke out. Stooks told me he managed to get his three children and Eva's sister out, but Eva was left behind. Stooks said he went back for her and found her lying on the second floor landing. I was shooting out that door across the hall like crazy then. But I still, I went up there, I grabbed and I brought on downstairs and brought outside. Some guy, I, 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 I didn't even, I never did get his name, but uh, he told me he had a car because there wasn't no ambulance or fire department, there wasn't nobody here. So uh, I told him 
you know, he put in his car and he took straight on down to uh, South Baltimore General Hospital. Besides being shocked and sad, Stukes and his fellow Cherry Hill residents are angry. Angry because, they say, the building should have been better equipped with a fire escape and smoke detectors. And a lady from the Hound Authority was around his sister house, Eva's mother house today, and she told us that, uh, that she didn't think that, that, that these apartments was fire hazards. What do you think about them? I, they are. They are. Trap. They're nothing but a death trap. That's, that's all. They're nothing but a death trap. You, you, you can't, it's only one way in, it's only one way out. But the housing department says one way out is enough. They say that under the building code, only one exit is required. They say they will work out a fire prevention education program with Cherry Hill residents, but that fire escapes will not be installed. The fire department, however, says the city will be forced to install smoke detectors in the building. It is doubtful that the relatives and friends of eight-year-old Eva Stooks will be satisfied with what the city intends to do or not do following the child's death. This is Ron Olson on the scene in Cherry Hill. Sharon Goner lives with her children in the Lexington Terrace public housing complex. She does not like it. She says there are too many criminals, too few ways to escape a fire. She says it is no place to raise children. There just ain't nothing for them to do. I mean, just no grass to run around, nowhere to learn anything about nature or nothing. What they see is what I see on through the windows. The condition of high rise are horrible, they are terrible. Uh, we have to live like animals almost. Garner and other mothers held a news conference today along with the Baltimore Welfare Rights Organization. They're demanding three things. That the city renovate 1,500 vacant houses and move families with children out of the high-rises and into those houses. That the city pass a law making it illegal to have families with children in the high-rises. And that Mayor Schaefer and other public officials meet to discuss the problem. They say if there is no meeting, they'll call a rent strike. We're mothers, for whatever, may, whatever reason costs us to get, to get in high rise, we're still human and we're mothers and we want the best for our children just like anyone else. And we want out of the high rise and we don't want it later, we want it now. The mothers feel the city does have the resources to move them out. They just feel they're not among the city's priorities. Kevin Brown, you Scene 2, Lexington Terrace. Well, as opposed to rent. And I think it's important that uh, some of the ladies here speak. Bob, is it, Bob, is it specifically these houses in the city? Mm -hmm. And that over 4,000 of them were not owned by the city. And well, the houses that were owned by the city, all but 100, were already pledged to certain programs. So my okay. question is, are you disputing those figures? Yes. This is what I found. Garbage spilling out of the dumpsters in a development that is otherwise very attractive. It was obvious that the folks who live at Hollander Ridge had simply run out of places to put their trash and that without a pickup soon, things would go from bad to worse. We've taken trash out of Hollander Ridge to, to try to prevent it from building up any further, but that's not even working. We've taken them to different dumpsters to try to spread it out some, but even that doesn't work because now all of them are just as bad as this that's one. Right. And it, it, the flies are getting ridiculous. You can't even open your windows. We don't have air conditioning, so we have to open up the windows right. to let in the breeze. And the flies are coming in with it. The magnets are chasing the kids. we got to hose them back down the sewer holes, and the, and the rats are taking over. Yeah. And it, it, it doesn't make any sense. Right. Have you they called? Have, have you called the city? We've called yeah. the city. And we've so called management. Amazing. We've called yeah. Channel 13. We called all the different news. You're the first news media that came out to even see what was happening. Who did you talk to at the city? Um, who was that it? Uh, oh, who did you talk to? I spoke to? with uh, Mr. Harrington and someone of that nature uh, down at the mayor's office, and he's uh, he replied to me that he felt that the city shouldn't have to play the role of as, as a landlord. So, I borrowed a phone and called the mayor's and, office uh, myself. I'm out here and I've been taking some pictures and the garbage out here is really outrageous. Uh, the folks here say they haven't had a pickup in two weeks. And they got rats and uh, maggots crawling through the stuff and in this heat it's really getting to stink. And, uh, I, you know, since uh, the mayor has been uh, so involved with cleaning up the garbage around the city, I thought he'd want to do something about this. And I was wondering if I could, I'm going to put the story on the air tonight, and I was wondering if I could uh, say that uh, the mayor's office is going to look into the problem. 
And with that, a spokesperson for the mayor said the trash problem at Hollander Ridge will be taken care of, hopefully very soon. Water was flowing through the streets of the Murphy Public Housing Project this morning, just not through most of the faucets. The six-inch water main that burst yesterday and was temporarily repaired is out of service again today, leaving 284 families high and dry. Housing officials had the water running by late last night, only to return after eight today to find their repairs didn't hold. Uh, anytime you make a temporary anything, it's just what it says, temporary. So, of course, by being a holiday, when we made that temporary, uh, today we'd hope to do the permanent repair, but in the meantime, the pressure broke it loose. The George Street Elementary School is serving as an oasis during the water crisis. Wanda Singleton is one of those making the trek. can't wash dishes. You really can't cook what you want to cook. Some people around here started having cookouts yesterday, but the water problem got so bad they just stopped them and, you know, went on somewhere else to another cookout. As Wanda and others like her continue the battle against a never-ending pile of dirty dishes, the maintenance supervisor was saying the water would be on by late afternoon. He hoped. Usually we have a problem with blackouts, then sometimes we have problems with the telephones. This is the first time in a long time was the water. It's always something. I'm Fran Fan Shell on the scene in West Baltimore.